I'm Michael Matthews, and today's 8-Minute Story Challenge uh, is from Carpe Guitarum, which I'm pretty sure I just screwed up, uh, but this is someone off of the gauntlet. <laughs> uh, put in, Walk Like an Egyptian by the Bengals, and was looking for cyberpunk in the Shadowrun sort of style. So, uh, one, I did not have to listen to Walk Like an Egyptian, because it's Walk Like an Egyptian, so I know it. But two, I got to listen to Walk Like an Egyptian, so thank you, that was great. Um... So one of the things with Walk Like an Egyptian, it's fairly upbeat. Uh, a lot of times Shadowrun, we kind of like do the noir, doom, and gloom. This one's fairly upbeat. It's got its places where it kind of builds and then drops down really low again before kind of hitting a bit more of a, a, another build. Uh, I, I was a musician a very long time ago when I was like in high school, uh, so I talk about it goods, you see. So... Um, one of the things I think is missing a lot from cyberpunk, especially Shadowrun, is the, the punk aspect of it. The sort of sticking it to the man. So what I wanted to do was do something that wasn't your standard, very literally mercenary Shadowrun, where they're being hired by a corporation to do something to another corporation that will probably screw over other people, and the only thing that kind of ends up ever making it punk is it just becomes personal because they get betrayed, because that's how Shadowrun too often works. Uh, but the original Cyberpunk, like if you're doing 2020, or I've not checked out the Veil 2020 yet, but uh, I want to, because sometimes I have, I have a hankering for doing some old school Cyberpunk in a big way, in a way that like Tech Noir, which is fantastic, doesn't quite scratch the itch. Um, there's some natures of the system, but I, I do kind of want to go back to old school Cyberpunk and do like a short thing with it. So for this one... Um, Instead of making it a, a much wider canvas, what I want to do is narrow it down to a single neighborhood, and a neighborhood that the characters uh, grew up in and knew, uh, that at least one of them has some pretty serious ties to. So, you've got the Bombay Grill. The Bombay Grill has been this neighborhood institution for forever. Uh, Mahu Sarkis, who is the or Madu Sarkis, who's the owner of it, is someone that everybody knows. He's always been very cool about... Uh, people coming in there and kind of hanging out. Like, there's, there's rarely a time you don't remember lines uh, at the restaurant because it's super busy, but even in its sort of off periods during the day, uh, neighborhood kids would come there and hang out. And he's sponsored things at school. He like the, There is no neighborhood without this guy and his restaurant. It has been a major part of it. It's, it's catered things you've been to. It has sponsored things in the school. Um, it... it he does a lot. He gives a lot back, and he is essentially like considered the heart of the neighborhood. So bring in Logan Pickering, who's the CEO of the burgeoning Life Goods Corporation. Life Goods Corporation, uh, make it what you want. Biotechnology. It could be some sort of um, uh, like software, so like maybe physical security that people use. But whatever it is, it's one of those corporations that's a little more interested in money. So we get this. Uh, businessman who is very locally oriented and just a wonderful person and gives back and is not living high off the hog versus Pickering who is well it's a cyberpunk corporate bad guy um he's bought a whole bunch of the other build the other like businesses on that same block what he's trying to do is basically buy the block tear it down build the new life goods building because it's getting big enough that they can actually afford their own building now they've, they've got offices in a couple different places throughout the city uh, they want to kind of make themselves a business complex uh, so they're they're doing fairly well for the most part he's had pretty easy time getting the stuff but what happens is if they take out the Bombay Grill, once he goes, any of the other stragglers are going to go as well. They're going to tear it down, they're going to build this up. It's going to end up raising rent and such through the roof to the point where the neighborhood and such as you knew it is going to become um, gentrified. It's You're going to lose a neighborhood because people who've lived there for generations are not going to be able to afford to live there anymore. Um, the, the destruction of this restaurant, the Bombay Grill, equals everything you grew up with is gone. So, um, Pickering is going to start off, the PCs never arrive, uh, he's going to try to use a couple different offers, Madu is going to essentially take care of those, or reject those, damage to Madu's place, beating himself up, and finally threatening other parts of the neighborhood, basically threatening other people to the point where Madu will find himself in a position where he has to, he feels like he has to give in. Uh, at that point, it'll be bought. 
the building will come down, the life goods office complex will go up, the neighborhood will die. So when they first come in, Madu doesn't want to be trouble. He's very proud of what he has built. He's also someone who is trying to stay away from violence. Um, he, he doesn't believe that's necessarily going to help. And let's be honest, often you've got PCs or violent people. If you've got a cyberpunk with like no solos, which would be awesome, get your rocker boys and other stuff up in there, uh, rocker boys and journalists and stuff. Um, if he's got them, he might be much more open to them helping out in whatever ways they can. But if it, if you've got a violent crew, which is fairly standard cyberpunk stuff, he's not necessarily going to want to go that way. He might contact the cops or Lone Star or whatever it is in the system that you're doing. Um, they are not going to do much for him because Pickering is definitely put in. If things go well here, uh, it's going to be good for the local precinct. He's bought some cops. He's got that taken care of. So that's not going to end up working. Now at first, well, what's going to get to the point where he physically gets beaten up? He's going to be a little more open to maybe the violent aspect of it, but it's going to have to build up. Uh, once it's become personal, he'll be more for it. If, if, if it gets to the point where they're threatening other people, that point he's going to be okay. Guns blaze, do whatever. Um, but going guns blazing is going to be a little difficult because Pickering has got the law on his side. He's got them paid for. He has a lot of resources. They're going to have to find other ways to bring him down. So, um, Pickering, I'm going to add a few things to the document as I go. I'm going to take a couple ideas from Leverage here. Um, so Pickering has got all those bonuses, but he also needs to have a weakness. Um, one of his things is he is being bankrolled uh, by uh, some mobsters. Uh, he's got money coming in from, what we'll say, maybe biotech uh, work that he's done for their uh, their guard their lieutenants and guards and stuff so he's got some money coming in from there that is off the books but th that's the kind of thing that players find so that is his sort of achilles heel there and there's definitely other ways to get to him but that is one of the things they can look into and the players will be able to learn this probably after they talk with Aubrey Haynes, better known as Push, which is his head of security now first Pickering is going to essentially get the cops in to try to get rid of the problem um, to talk to the players. When that doesn't work, he's going to send Push. Push is not going to show up wanting to fight at first. She's going to want to take stock of who these people are. Can she find a way to get them off of this business? Um, or can she hire them? If they seem like they're competent enough, would they be able to hire them and bring them on? And she's going to want to try to leave peacefully, and she's going to want to make it seem like they're going to, they're going to do whatever. Now, if she can get them hired or get them off of it in another way uh, it will remain peaceful but one of the things she's going to be doing is uh, she'll have some cards with her when she shows up of course but she's going to want to put together a strike team that seems like they'll have the firepower or whatever they need to bring down the players if they uh, seem like they're going to continue to be a problem so things will end up getting personal very quickly um, Pickering's mob contacts and such for the most part don't necessarily want to get directly involved. Pickering should be able to handle this stuff himself, and Pickering is not going to want to go to them. If it gets bad enough, they might, but the players ideally should have an opportunity to get them taken down before that happens. If you want to go into something bigger uh, over several uh, episodes or something, or several sessions, yeah, maybe start bringing some of those things in, um, or perhaps the mobsters put the pressure on him that if he can't take care of this, they're going to replace him with someone who can. Uh, depending on the amount of power that you want to give them and how much you want to dive into it. If this is just a uh, like a small one to three session thing in the middle of much larger campaigns, keep it relatively small, keep it personal, keep it a Pickering, Madu, and the characters thing. Um, if you want to make it more of a start of a campaign, you have the ties where the money goes to that you can also go into and you can kind of create what's going on with life goods that is more of a legal problem than the other things that he's doing. So that is the Walk Like an Egyptian cyberpunk adventure uh, for it. Uh, the document is going to be in the description if you like it. Uh, hit share, hit subscribe. Uh, other videos are coming up this week for the song challenge. Next week I'll be putting up another kind of regular Confessions of the Improv GM video. So thank you very much and have yourself a great evening.